got a stone in my slipper. <laughs> Get some peace in here. Uh, well, going out tonight off the wagon. Did you see it weighing today? See the big price with Cate Stair. I'll never be the same again. Big David Price with Cate Stair. Unbelievable. Do you know what you get when you've got a black car? You tend to get stone chips, don't you? You know, stone chips here, there and everywhere, and it spoils it, doesn't it? Colour it, you know, like you look, when you polish it. I want to touch them up, but... Ooh, puck is going out! I'm going out for four beers, and I'm having nothing else. Nothing. Nothing. It's not worth it. But we'll see. Uh, I want to talk about... The WBA. Now the rankings are out next week, aren't they? And, uh, you know, I was talking to a, I was talking to a guy. Uh, we're talking to a guy who knows a kid. Who knows a kid? You know this kid. Well, and he reckons that Joe Joyce might end up in top ten with WBC this this month coming. And this kid's mustard. Now, if Joyce ends up in top 10 at WBC, it'll be because he's got that WBA gold belt, won't it? But he doesn't deserve a top 10 ranking with WBC, Joe Joyce. He doesn't deserve it. And uh, this is where I think that uh, this is where I think that boxing. This is where it goes wrong, in my opinion. This is where it goes wrong. This is where. This is where it definitely goes wrong. Tell you what, looking clean, looking clean today. What you do when you've got a car, right, that's black, you get this. But I prefer colour magic. Get this and polish it in it and it just gives it that same effect. T-cut's all that now. It's all colour magic and that Simon's same colour as the car sort of polish and you can't go wrong and then you just look for little marks here and there and everywhere and uh like they're swapping it for a sirocco but cause somebody said to me the other day do you know what porky mercs are for old men it was bothering me so i ponder on things don't i but i've seen this sirocco 17 play and i like it but i just don't think it drives like this does feels sturdy though and solid a couple of years ago, I had a golf two year old, and it felt like that. But then again, it is a golf, and it really is Sirocco. But I don't know. I don't want anybody to think I'm old, getting old. I'm having my hair transplant next, like Eddie Hearn, won't I? But no, getting back to WBA, uh, I think that they can't, that, that'll mean they're going to have four wheel champions, won't it? If they're going to do Joshua Super. Char regular, Joyce Gold, and Brian interim. Now, surely the interim supersedes supersedes the gold belt. So, but where's this gold belt coming into it? Is that like a? I'm going to say subsidiary. Is that like a next in line sort of thing? I mean, look at look at that fight uh, that's going on. Tomorrow with Fitz, Fitzgerald and Fowler. Now, Fowler beats him in my opinion, but I want the other kid to beat him. But look at that fight that's going on tomorrow. That fight is for is for a belt, but they're talking about the belt, not as a belt, as a ranking, a top 15 ranking belt. Is this where boxing's going now? I pray that Fitzgerald wins, but I don't know. Depends what Fitzgerald turns up. How can, we, how can we have a go at him? He's not been beat, has he? He's a Commonwealth gold. It's like he said, Fowler got to Olympics, not through back door, through cat, through cat flap. He's very funny. And I hope he wins. I'll be cheering for him. But I think Fowler might have too much for him, and probably win on points, Fowler. But look, as far as I'm concerned, 
we shouldn't have fighters talking about oh I'm fighting for the WBA uh, international and uh, but they're not so they're saying I'm, I'm uh, look at belt I've got it's a top 15 ranking they're talking about ranking the so these fighters are, are, are passing they're even doing it now before British title fights they're passing the British title and the European and I think the British title is gonna go like the European I've had this argument with Dennis and we've had many arguments because Dennis's route is Commonwealth and then IBF. Now, so, people don't want to work with European, do they? The EBU because you get shafted, you don't get looked after and nobody's got any pull with them. Nobody, no promoter in England has got any pull with the EBU. Eddie Hearn couldn't get it for Joshua. Mick Hennessy couldn't get it for for Carl Froch. And Carl Froch, let me tell you, were raging about that. He should have fought Christy of Sanavea and Mick Super Pasta. He couldn't pull it off. Couldn't get it. They didn't they just won't have it. And if you do fight for an EBU and it's close, you don't get a nod. I mean look at Josh Whale. He got shafted. Nah. I don't get on with Steffi Bull no more, as everybody knows, but you've got to hand it to him. They rolled dice, didn't they? And he delivered, but they got shafted out there, didn't they? They got shafted. So all that hard work that he's done with Josh, Steffi, it's all undone, isn't it? And then you you don't back foot then, trying to get back to where you were. Everybody seems to blame weight. I don't know. Josh went in for Super Bantam, did he, and lost, didn't he? So, I don't know where Josh goes now. Remains to be seen, doesn't it? But... I think in my heart that nobody is bothering with the, the EBU anymore. No one bothers with it, do they? It's uh, the monkey belt, isn't it? For monkeys. For idiots from France and Germany and all that. If you want to go for a clean sweep, yeah, you can go for it. Dennis, Dennis dealt with him, and I don't think he were keen. Jamie McDonnell won a European with Dennis. David A. Won a European with Dennis. Oh, what other one? Clinton Woods won a European. Did Carl Thompson? Don't quote me on that. But I know Carl Thompson iced David A on Dennis's shift. But uh, but other than that, uh, everybody's going IBF and WBA route. Eddie Earn is now a WBA man. He's a WBA man. And I can see Eddie Earn paying step aside money for pool F and then scooping that up at a, another date. They'll get some uh, wrote in a contract where pool F, we're going to let you have this belt here because IBF stick to rules, don't they? Look what they did with we, we Jamie McDonald when they stripped him. Eddie Earn tried to play poker with Dennis, didn't he? And he lost, really, didn't he? As regards the belt, but he won, he got McDonald, didn't he? got Jamie McDonnell. They went on a fantastic run and everybody knows that Jamie McDonnell were in my top 15 pound for pound leading up to that uh, to the fight in Monaco and I think after round four in Monaco I think he got all it all caught up with him. But what a run. Beat more people than Alan Minter, Frank Bruno in world title fights. Had more world title wins than Alan Minter, Frank Bruno uh, there's loads of other fighters in England. Glenn Catley only had one world title win, didn't he? You know, one-hit wonders. But Jamie McDonnell won a one-hit wonder. What a Jesus. When we look back on his record in years to come, we'll be amazed, won't we? We'll be like, wow, look what that kid did. Oh, we're going to go for a shave. Uh, I'm going to go for a shave tonight, but... I'm not going too far. I think I'm ready for a new wardrobe, some new jeans or something. If anybody's got any ideas about what new trainers I should buy, I just fancy a, a new pair of Nike trainers. New pair of Nike trainers I fancy. Anybody's got any ideas, let me know, because I'm fed up with Air Force Ones. I've grown out of it. I only really bought them Air Force Ones because Frotch had a pair, and I went and bought 12 pair every colour, but he don't wear them now, his Air Force ones, so I'm not wearing mine, because I'm a Frotch uh, fan, aren't I? Frotch fanboy. We all got to look up to somebody, haven't we? 
only joking. I don't see him much, to be honest. I see more of his mum and his stepdad than I do him. Getting back to the, the, the WBA. All you f boxing fans need to start getting in touch with Gilberto Mendoza and saying, and saying, listen, what are you doing? What are you doing with these belts? Because this is just... Why have we got a super champion, a regular champion, a gold champion and an interim champion? Will we have a silver champion then? Because then we could go down board, couldn't we? Joshua, champion. Or we could have Joshua 1, Char 2, Joyce 3, Brian 4, Usek will be in rankings shortly, only 5, Dillian White 6. We could have everybody with a belt, couldn't we? That's what we could do. And we could just not have, we could do away with contenders 1 to 10. And we could just have everybody with a belt. A WBA regular, an interim, a gold, a bronze, a silver, a gold international, a silver international, a KFC, AB, a ABF, LAG, BYG, BIG, Biggie Smalls. We could have a 2, two UPAC, a two-pack belt. We could, we could have an ASDA, an ASDA belt. I mean, we've got a Ring Magazine belt. Why don't we have a Beano comic belt? Oh! Drive me mad. Driving me mad. I'll end up pondering on it tonight. Probably end up rolling about on the floor with somebody. But, well, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm, I'm gonna do a good job of my car today. I think I'm gonna just touch these odd scratches in, stone chip scratches. And. Go out for four pints of shandy. What do you reckon? If anybody's got any ideas of an opponent for Tommy Frank, super flyweight, who's European, let me know. Any ideas for Tommy Frank, let me know. Send it in an email to me. And if we use him in the fight, I will guarantee you two ringside tickets for July 5th, Ponsford, Sheffield. How's about that? How's about that? For porky power. Forget stig power, it's porky power. And I'm genuine. I suppose stig is genuine, isn't he? In his own little in his own little stig mind. Is that better? Yeah. I don't know if I'm a Sirocco man. I'm a VW caddy man. Anybody got a VW caddy for sale? About an 08 plate. Let me know, I've got some uh, I've got some Passat wheels, they put them on Sirocco's, I'll put them on it, I'll dude it, I'll dude it up, and we're going to do a Porky wrap, Porky's Corner, and if it's black as well, that'll be great, Porky's Corner, you know it makes sense, and then some writing for the company that we're going to have a deal with at wrap, if they'll do it, Porky's Corner, you know it makes sense, no bullshit, just Porky, and Porky Power in Corner or Porky Takeover. What do you think about that, Mr. Troll who keeps emailing me? Porky Takeover. What do you think? Is it a Porky Takeover? Would you be able to handle that? Hey, would you? We're gonna see, but shout out to Terry Fox. I hope you're well, mate. I've nearly finished my Battling Turpin book. Uh, they were real men back in them days, Turpin brothers. What 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 boxers they were, unbelievable. People go on about, don't they? He's tough, he's tough, he's tough. Listen, toughest men I've met, I've, I've ever met in the boxing industry, right? Clinton Woods, very very tough man. The toughest fight I've ever seen for punishment from somebody that I know personally and I get on with really well and we chat about oh Proch Groves the first one that were tough for him to get through that Andre Ward Frotch put put foot down didn't he from round eight on and he'd had some punishment up to then he was just Ward just kept picking away didn't he and then just Frotch went for it didn't he them last four rounds against Andre Ward watch especially the last two rounds when he put it on Ward when he were hanging on but I think 
Clinton Woods against Crawford Ashley. If you want to watch a good fight, go and watch Clinton Woods against Crawford Ashley. YouTube. Where Clinton were getting pinged all over the place by a massive, 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 massive cruiserweight ball down to light heavy. Nose broke, face smashed up. Go and watch that if you want to watch what toughness is all about. Obviously we know about Ward Gatty, don't we? All three fights, but Woods against Ashley, YouTube. And go watch Clinton against Roy Jones. Dennis threw a towel in, didn't he? Uh, few people had a go at Dennis after that fight. And Clinton were on a Euro level then, but he were ready for a world title fight. It's just that Roy Jones happened to have belt, didn't he? Now, Dennis threw a towel in and saved him for another day and made Clinton Woods a millionaire. Now, you've got to respect that, but God, I respect Clinton Woods so much for that fight against Roy Jones because he didn't want to quit. There's no quitting him, and that's how champions are made. Me and Robin Reed sat down in Bulgaria and we spoke about what makes a champion. And he said to me, do you know what, Porky? He said... No, I'm, I'm... Two minutes! And he's... Two minutes. And he said, this is what makes a champion. You know, when you say to him, right, come on another round on pads. And they do it. And they, and they tell you three more reps and they do it and then they get another two out of you and you say I can't do it more and more then they get another five out of you that's what makes a champion do you know a champion when he goes on his run in the morning you see what when I used to go when I, when I was 28 stone I used to go up round here all the way round here and come all the way back down there I'm not going to say what it is because I don't want people knocking on my door but I used to go all the way down there all the way round here it's exactly all the way round is exactly three mile. Three mile to here. And it would take me. It took me 90 minutes to start it. I was like. <gasps> <gasps> By the time I finished, I'd halved it. I'd halved it to 45 minutes with a bit of speed walking. But that was I was gradually losing weight. And I set me some targets. And each time it went down and down and down and a couple of times I went backwards by about half a minute and that so I ain't got the champion's resolve have I but a champion would get would, would run it and he would get to a certain point where there's like a mark on road or a tree or something and he'd look at his watch and then the day after he would look at it again and he'd know that he were on course to get round quicker Frotch does that and he used to log it that's a champion's resolve isn't it and I think a lot of people nowadays they don't have that I know, and I'm not going to say who, but I know a trainer out there who trains, trained world champions that takes fights, even though he knows his fighter's going to get beat, he takes fights. Now, that man gets X amount, doesn't he? Trainer, manager, whatever he's, whatever, I don't know what deals he's got, but what sort of trainer out there here? What sort of trainer out there is going to put fighters in with somebody knowing he's going to get beat? But when they're going to fight, they know they're going to get beat, they'll say things like They've only got to catch him, he can punch, he's got a puncher's chance When Johnny Nelson says, he's got a puncher's chance, he can bang That means they haven't got a prayer Now, I'm not going to say who it is because I don't think it's fair and I was told in confidence But I lost respect for that, I lost respect for that person when I heard that I lost respect for that person I did I lost respect, but you know, it's one of them things, isn't it? I mean, I, I know people that have fought guys and they know they're not going to beat, they're not going to get beat. They shouldn't be in ring with somebody. If you're going in a ring and you know you're going to get hammered, why would you go in? You're cheating the fans. You're not only cheating the fans, you're cheating yourself and you lose respect. Now, I look at it like this, right? Sometimes, sometimes everything shouldn't be about 19 minutes, 10 minutes left. Sometimes everything shouldn't be about money. It shouldn't be about money. Every now and then, it's got to be about respect. It's got to be about respect. I played this guy once at pool, and he hammered me. He hammered me. He tonked me 9-1. I thought, wow, I was in awe of him. And, I, and for ages I practiced and that, and I couldn't beat this guy. And eventually I beat him 5-4. And he said, yeah, mate, here's the, here's the score, because we used to play for the score. And I went, no, I'm not bothered. He goes, oh, you're not bothered about it? I goes, no. 
I'm not bothered about it. Because in my head, I took it took it out of my head that we were playing for money. It, sometimes the respect is more sometimes the respect's more than the money, isn't it? But, but, but yeah, so peace out. Keep on trucking. There was something else I wanted to speak about now, it's gone out of my head. It's gone out of my head. It's gone out of my brain cells. It's gone out of my brain cells. Oh, we're looking at doing a. Uh, we're looking at doing videos. Uh, doing something different. I don't know if we, I don't know when though. But we're just looking at doing something different. So if anybody's got any ideas, let me know. And I want to start getting. We're, we're going to start getting them out uh, a bit quicker because they're not getting out quick, are they? Really? I think that's the only fault with channel, isn't it? They're not getting out quicker, and that's because there's other, we have other things going on. He didn't. He didn't. They were taking piss out of anybody. It's just that there's other things going on. Look at the size of these now. Look at the size of that. Look at the size of that, man. That is a proper magic tree, that in it, eh? That's a proper magic tree, in it. They've got an offer on at Denneby, next to petrol station in Denneby, not the one. Not the car wash at the petrol station, the one at Denneby, the one next door, where I used to fog cars from. Right, they've got an offer there now, 10 quid, inside and out, screen wash topped up, mini valet, and a magic tree like that. I've got loads of magic trees at home, but this is a big lemon one. A big lemon like me. But, uh, but yeah, sometimes it, it, it's got to be more about the respect, I mean... I mean, how many fights can we? How many fights do we know that we've seen where Eddie Hearn's gone? Got to be in it to win it, baby. Dare to be great. Now, dare to be great. He's okay when you're throwing towel in, but when you're throwing towel in after a few rounds, after all that hype about, I'm gonna take it to the trenches. You know, like Ultra Tech. Sorry for copying your Uncle Ultra, but I'm gonna take it to the trenches. We're going to war. How many people say they're going to war and they're going to go to the trenches? Tony Bellew, he knew he was at his depth against Usyk. But people like Johnny Nelson are coming out with things like, I think Tony Bellew is technically better than Usyk. Yeah. Olympic gold medalist who's beat Baturbia twice against a guy who's... Got two world title wins. Tony Bellew has two world title wins too. Macabo, who's never won a belt, and BJ Flores, who's never won a belt. They are Tony Bellew's elite wins. Because world championship fights are elite fights, aren't they? Because if they're not, what is elite? What is elite? Is that where a champion fights another champion? And it's... A unification. Is that elite? Frotch Kessler. That's elite, isn't it? Frotch Yusef Mack. Is that elite? I don't know. Maybe maybe that's super elite. Yusef Mack, IBF number five. Frotch cut him down like, cut him down like cheese, didn't he? But getting back to Tony Bellew's CV, shocking. He shouldn't have been in that ring with Yusef. But I give him respect for it because he's a boxer and all boxers deserve respect. But all that... I'm going to take it to the trenches! And anybody who doesn't agree with me is a hater! You're a hater! Porky, you're a hater! Not a hater, I'm a realist. I don't want bullshitting. I don't want to hear Eddie Hearn say, got to be in it to win it, baby. Dare to be great. And he's deserved this fight. Look at the numbers he does. For example, Dave Allen's taking it into the trenches, isn't he, this month against... Uh, oh, next month is it? Next month, taking it into trenches. Is it? And is it? What date went today? Twenty ninth. So. First in three week. Three week. Dave Allen's taking it into trenches. He's got a tattoo on his chest. Dave Allen. It says war. So Dave's going into trenches. Now, did Dave go into trenches with Ortez? No, he shouldn't have been in there with me. Just took punishment. Taking punishment isn't into the trenches. Going into the trenches when you're going, come on, and you're actually landing. 
Now, Crawler getting pinged about by Lomachenko isn't going into the trenches. It's going in, going to slaughter. It's going to meat market, isn't it? It's like Klitschko. He was taking people to meat market. One for 20 defences or 20 odd defences. Crawler's going to meat market, isn't it? If Crawler beats Lomachenko, in my opinion, it's a bigger upset than. Mike Tyson, Buster Douglas. It's that bigger upset because Crawler, has Crawler beat a world champion or a former champion? Or was that belt against, when he won the belt, was that somebody who'd been upgraded? I don't really know. Has Crawler got an elite win? Crawler's not got an elite win, right? We know that. But he's earned his mandatory. He's had three wins on trot since Linares. I think, is it three? They were against guys that he's gone 12 rounds with, but... Crawler's not an elite level fighter. Crawler's got a story, so Eddie Earn milked it with a story when he when Crawler tried to be a copper, didn't he? he? Tried to stop burglars and if it's your own house, fair enough, but why would you put yourself in that situation if it's a neighbour? I don't know, but I don't know, but fair play to Crawler for getting stuck in there, but if somebody were burgling my neighbour's house, I won't get involved in the middle of the night. Why would you put yourself in danger like that? It's not you want what we're doing in Manchester, come on. So we had a story, didn't he? Now, Awara Davis has got a story, hasn't he? But when it suited them, they didn't want him, did they? So I think Ara Davis was thrown under a bus. He were, in, he were alienating people on social media. Collar one, because he's got that nice guy image, hasn't he? Yes, Eddie, no, Eddie, three bags full, Eddie. Other people are like that. If you're going out and you're giving Eddie Earn love, he will go into bat for you. Has Dillian White shown Eddie Hearn any love? No, but Eddie Hearn's delivered for him, hasn't he? But Dillian White, Eddie Hearn's running around saying, I can't go out to bat for Dillian 100% because he's speaking to other people. Now, when people ring Dave Allen and make offers to him, straight on phone to, uh, to Eddie, oh, I've been offered this. Why would David do that, though? Why? He's not a matchroom fighter. Not a matchroom fighter, so... If you're there to manage yourself or look after yourself, you don't need to tell them everything. You keep it close to your chest, don't you? Den made an offer for Dave Allen to fight on his show with Jaffa. Dave pulled out with a week to good, didn't he? To fight Yoko. Now, it's business, isn't it? It's business. Now, Eddie Earn is the holy grail, isn't it? If you get to work with him, that's good, isn't it? Now, but if I were a boxer and I were getting offers off other people, I wouldn't tell a soul. You keep it to yourself, wouldn't you? You won't go running back telling them because you're doing it out of respect to Matchroom. But did Matchroom respect Dave Allen when they threw him in with Ortez? No, because he didn't sell a ticket. He didn't sell a ticket, or he won't. He don't nobody knew David then, did they? So they didn't respect him, did they? But a young kid like that going in with Ortez, David should have been wrapped up in cotton wool and, and told he's got to train and build 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 cards around him. You don't throw him on with Ortiz, then Dillian White. You're just using him as a body. Because he's got miles on clock now, hasn't he? Now, Dave Allen knocks out Dill Lucas Brown and I'm going to have a lot, of money on, a lot of money on a knockout because Lucas Brown's got old in, in, the, in the time he's been out of boxing. He's got old. And I see David stopping him. He's fresher than him, but he's got miles on clock. But when it comes down to it, Eddie Hearn don't care about anybody except his family. Now... Lee Purdy were his best mate at one time. My new best friend. This is my new best friend. Where's Lee Purdy now? If Lee Purdy knocked on Eddie Hearn's door and asked for 500 quid, would he get it? Would he? No, he wouldn't, would he? No. Dave Allen turned pro with Dennis Hobson. Dennis said, got a name for you. You're going to be known as the White Rhino. The White Rhino. And that's his name. And he started with Dennis, but he weren't dedicated enough. Now... Was saying Dave Allen deserves to be an headlining because he's training for a fight. Lo and behold, the boxer training for a fight. Oh my god, I am buzzing that Dave's headlining. Do you know why? Because he deserves it for all the shit he's had in his life. But does training for one fight mean that you should headline? I don't know. Who's Dave's best win? If Chisora's on, who's Dave's best win? If Chisora's on the card, right? Chisora. He's got a better CV than a British Commonwealth European champion. Fought for a world title, has he? Yeah. So, Dave's not got a central area belt. But he's headlining. So, who is he fighting? 
is fighting a former world champion. So all them people emailing me, you shouldn't have a go at me because Lucas Brown's a former world champion. Derek Chisora isn't. Lucas Brown's known to us, he's been in with Dillian White. So that fight, technically, is better than Chisora Gashi. Now, Chisora, I don't think he'll be up for that Gashi fight. I don't, and I think Chisora, I think it's over for him now. So my tip for that night is Dave Allen win by knockout. Derek Chisora to lose on points. That's the double I'm going to have. I'm not interested in all the other fights on the show. Not interested. Alan KO, Chisora to lose on points. So, Gashi points, Alan KO. That's my tip. Uh, that's about it, really. So, I'm going to... Uh, I'm gonna, gonna go where I forgot where I wanna fucking do then. What am I fucking, I don't even know what I'm doing here. I'm gonna do some of that. What am I gonna do? Take this polishing. Take this polishing out. <laughs> Take this polishing and touch, touch these couple of scratches up and then I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna go into town, I think, to relish. And uh, probably end up, I might go back to my mates for a game of poker in town more. I want to see a game of poker tonight. Don't take that wrong poke her, I don't mean poke her, because I don't poke anything at the moment. The only thing I poke are people with a stick with shit on the end of it, to keep all women away from me lately. So I'm looking so goddamn hot. Now we're a bit cringe, that one, give me some of a slap. Uh, so, peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. The best, the best sport in the world, by far, it's boxing, you need everything, don't you, speed, agility, toughness, mental strength, you know, Frotch said to me once, right, at Ellie he says, Poker, do you know what, do you know, training, it'll take average man so far, this is how certain people get a licence, training will take average man so far, but you've got to have a bit of talent. People say, oh, Carl Frotch, you want technically brilliant and all that, blah de blah Go and watch Arthur Abraham, 12 round, what he did to him. Go and watch that. World Amateur Bronze, he should have gone to the Olympics in 2000. Ask anybody. Yeah. And he's ended up doing all right. You know, he, he, uh, He's done all that for himself. I mean, he's got more money at the moment than Stock Aitken and Dennis Waterman, hasn't he? Or is it Stock Aitken and Waterman? Stock Aitken and Waterman, isn't it? Them all used to manage Jason Donovan, didn't they? Right. But I think that boxing's got to change for itself at the moment. It's got to change for itself. But our channel is just going from strength to strength to strength to strength. Do you know, for years I thought this shirt were black. It's bloody blue, isn't it? Look. Burn me slippers. Blue. Get me that black shirt out! You haven't got a black shirt. It's blue. You give your black one charity shop. Because it was one of them that had fit giant A stacks. And it took in about ten times. It was that big. It was like that. Like a big bed sheet. I was like that, wasn't I? I used to get up in the morning and I'd have six pieces of bacon. Six slices of bread. Brown sauce, low pack, pint of milk, coffee. And then I'd be thinking about from nine o'clock what I were gonna eat at eleven and that'd be a few chocolate eclairs. Now look at me. Fifteen clementines. I'll be a cruiser waiting another two months. I'll be a cruiser waiting two months and you know what? I bet Steffi Bull weighs about twelve and a half, thirteen stone. Steffi could come up to Cruiser, couldn't he? For charity. Couldn't he? He could do that, couldn't he? Or we could have it on the cobbles. What do you think, Steffi? Do you think it'd be better on cobbles? You know where I live, Steffi, don't you? You know where I live? You know where this is? You know, Steffi. I know you think about me at night, don't you? When you go to bed, Steffi, at night, you think about old Porky Boy, don't you? You go, Porky Ross! Porky Ross! What do you know about boxing? Or all your little digs that you have. But what does Porky Rust know about boxing? Well, I know this. That I went for a second license. 
and they said, what gym are you affiliated with? And at the time I'd fell out with Dennis, and I said, Steffi Bowles. And said, not according to him. We're mates like that, who, need enemy, who needs enemies? Uh, me and Den got speaking five months later, were it? And he heard about it, off one at board. And he said, why don't you put my name down? I goes, because we had that fallout, didn't we? And I didn't want to. And he goes, uh, well, I'd have got you through. I'd have gone and sat next to you. Because one of the questions were, they says to me, Russell, have you ever been in trouble before? And I went, no, no, not really. He went, well, you have to tell the truth, have you? And he looked me straight in the eye, you know, that fucking Les Potts, ex-chief of police from round here. He went, Russell, can I ask you again, have you been in trouble? And it all come flashing back to me. It reminded me of being in a police interview where I just got no comment. So I went, no comment. And he went, you've got to answer. You're not under interrogation, have you been? But I felt like I were. He goes, have you been in trouble before? And I went, yeah, I have. But for, he goes, what for? I goes, for nothing worth bragging about. And he goes, what for? And I goes, drink driving. And he goes, it's a little bit more than drink driving. He then said, anyway, we'll move on. We'll move on to to something else. And they asked me some questions. And I think I got a couple wrong. I got, uh, what weight is 154? I thought, well, that's an easy one. I went, light middleweight. He goes, no, think again. I went, light middleweight. He goes, no, think again. I went, is that a trick question, mate? Light middle, he went, no, it's super welter. And I went, it isn't, mate, wait there. And I whipped the green book out. I went, and he went, oh, it's, uh, we've updated it now. The book I had were 2000 and some of the old, one of the old books. So I went, all oh, right, okay. Fair enough, so I left here at that. Because it must have took them two, two or three years to get me on interview, it took that long. So anyway, he asked me another question. He goes, what tools do you take for, to the ring for and uh, blah de blah if you're a cut man? So I goes, I don't want to be a cut man. He goes, well, for uh, we, let's go through a scenario. Uh, the trainer on the night is uh, took sick and you're going to be slipped in as like a replacement on the night. You know, like a seconds. And this is why they have seconds because they can't do a corner, can't they? It, they manipulate you anyway. So I turned around and I went through it all. Then I, you know, tie wraps, bandages, cotton buds, you know, all that rubbish. Do you know what the one thing I forgot? The main thing, <laughs> iron. Forgot that. That's because it startled me. He startled me up, put me on the spot. What about the other one? I'll do another question he asked me as well. He, a he asked me another question. Oh, diet. What What does a fighter, what would you take a fighter to eat? I said, well, what, what has that got to do with this? He goes, after weighing, what do you take them to eat? And I, I thought these were trick questions. And I said, well, pasta. And he said, yeah, but how long should a fighter have pasta before fight and all that? Well, it depends on fighter, doesn't it? Or depends uh, uh, what his weight is before and after and if he's had anything before. Some fighters might be dehydrated and be down to hardly anything. There's an answer for it all and a way around it all. Now, when I spoke to Dennis about it after, he said they won't, he said they took liberties with you. If I was sat next to you then, or Glyn Rhodes or Chris Medley and hear them, they wouldn't have let him treat me like that. They wouldn't have let that Les Potts treat me like that. And then afterwards he goes to me, uh, he goes, well, what it is like, you're very inexperienced and blah de blah and all that, and you should be getting simple questions like that, right? And I goes, well, for starters, what difference is it? 154, light, mid, low, super welter. You know, I don't get that. I didn't get that one. In America, they still say it as like middle, don't they, on MC work. But it was just little things like that. They're very, very picky. But I know for a fact, because I've heard back, and I'm not going to say full full story what I heard back, but the knives were already out, right? Because it's the, I've rocked the establishment. And I, same with Peter Fury. When Peter Fury went on his interview, it wasn't Les Smith. It wasn't. Les Potts, it were Robert Smith. Robert Smith said, Peter, uh, how are you doing and all that? And so said, right then, what's your name? He went, Peter, Peter Fury. Peter said it was like being in front of Edmasters. They're all in on that big long table and I was there and he goes, Peter, 
When I was there, it was like a big long tail. Anyway, what's your name, Peter Fury? He goes, Peter, do you still see anybody from your old neighbourhood? Peter went, looked at him and he went, what the fuck has that got to do with boxing? Now, as soon as Peter said that right, he's lost room, hasn't he? He's lost room, so... And then they were, well, do you know, do you, they, they were more or less going on about his past, weren't they? Because he's, you know... And Peter's just, he said, you know you, to Robert Smith, he said, yo, you, you're a fucking blowjob. Now, I didn't say anything like that because... I was just stunned at it, uh, stunned at how schoolboyish he is, but I felt for Peter there, I felt for him. But, obviously, it didn't work out for Peter, and he, he had to go get an Irish licence, didn't he? But Peter Fury doesn't deserve to be treated like that, and I don't as well, because when I spoke to uh, Alan Ulster, about ten month, nine, ten months later, we got chatting and all that, and he goes, oh, how are you doing, Porky, and all that. We were like, you know, right, right jolly, and all that, and I went, you're a bit jolly, aren't you? I said, yeah, I'm all right. And he went, oh, you're, you're a bit warm, aren't you? And I didn't know what he meant. I went, I'm all right. I'm not red hot. I'm, I'm, I'm all right. Why? Are you? Uh, do I look like I'm sweating? Because I think I'd had some at the time, like, and I might have been out my head or something. And, and I thought, well, I didn't know what he meant. And he went, no, no, a bit, a, a bit warm. I goes, well, what do you mean a bit warm? He went, you know, you've been in trouble and all that, like. And I thought. They knew, didn't they? They already know when you go on interview. So, as far as I can say, they can get fucked. Fucking bored. I'll never apply again. I was broken hearted about it all. But I should have gone in with Den, shouldn't I? Because he's got a bit more pull, hasn't he? But, who's to say that somebody didn't already stick knifing on me? Do you know what I mean? So, but, same people who get form and then they stick knifing on you, don't they? That's what I'm hearing, but, it is what it is, isn't it? But you know where I live if you want to knock on the door. But I ain't bothered about British boxing border controls. I set a fucking. It's an old boys club, isn't it? Do you know what, right? Somebody who's, who's a good friend of mine, right? He he knew somebody who knew board back in the day. You know, in, when it all first started and that. And they were just a load of people. You know, like the Craze and Richardsons. They were just a load of people like that who suddenly decided who suddenly decided that that they wanted to uh, just have this like sanctioning board or whatever it is that's all they are isn't it and since then it's gone from gangsters running it because it used to have this big Hollywood number didn't it back in the day from gangsters running it to, to, to Freemasons and magistrates, judges and ex-coppers that John Reese who was sat there when I went for mine He's a, he's a QC, isn't it, that John Reese. You've got Les Potts there, ex-chief of police from round here. You know what I mean? I had Les Potts' phone number on here. And uh, I used to send him all sorts of mad stuff on WhatsApp. And he said, can you kindly ref stop sending that stuff? And he blocked me. And when I got my new number recently, I sent him loads of mad pictures and he blocked me again. So I've still got your number, Les. And every time... Every time... Uh, Peter Fury Jr. sends me one of them weird videos or mad videos that he sends me or or Nicky Smedley, every time they send me a video, I'm going to forward it, you lads. It's only banter. It's only banter. But, uh, but yeah, it did bother me for a bit, but it don't bother me now because I'm never going to get a laminate, am I? Then reckons he can get me a laminate for, because uh, you need a laminate, don't you, for three years before you can be a manager, but I'd rather just be an advisor to some people, because I don't want to take any money out of the boxing industry anyway. I just want to see everybody looked after right and treated right and get right fights, but I might go for a, I might get Den to put me in for a bellman, you know, bellman. And then if any anybody I like's fighters are getting battered in the last round and there's 10 seconds to go, who knows? I might just sit there and not ring bell because you've got to stick to rules, haven't you? <laughs> I'm only messing with you. A bit more time to kill. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna polish this now and I'm just gonna touch this scratch in. Pin scratch on. Couple of stone chips on my bonnet. I ain't got none on my grill though, but I've got a couple of scratches. I've got a couple down here. Seat belt, the mainly seat belt ones down here, aren't they? 
It's been a good car, this. I don't know if I'm a Sirocco. I don't know if I'm a Sirocco man, to be honest. I don't know if I'm a Sirocco man. I don't know if I'm a Sirocco man. I was looking at them sill. You know them chrome things that they have on the sill? Mercedes Benz AMG. They're like £99.95 for two, aren't they? All it is is a chrome strip in it that says Mercedes Benz AMG. It's a con. It's a con. But. But, uh, but yeah, so Krola Lomachenko. Krola is going to get beat down and look, he'll be ready with towel. Uh, just like Dominic Ingle where with Kel Brook. Now, what's happening with Kel Brook as well? People keep asking me, Pokey, what's happening with Kel Brook? How come we don't do any Kel Brook videos? Uh, I don't know, to be honest. But uh, it's up to Kel, innit? Who's to say that Kel Brook's even happy with Eddie here at the moment? Who's to say that? Because would you be happy if you were with him? Would you be happy if you were with Eddie Earn? Hey, because I wouldn't. I wouldn't be happy with what they've done to him. Kel Brook could have been our Terry Norris, couldn't he? Before he fought Golovkin. If Kel had took that Golovkin fight, would he ever have got a pay per view? Yeah, they got a Amir Khan fight. But. That's what I reckon. And they got the Amir Khan fight, but I think it's over for Kel now at 147. He's a 154 guy. Kel Brook against Charlo. Is Kel Brook against Charlo pay per view? Yeah, I think it is. I think it is pay per view, like we a stacked card. I'm not saying that because my pal trains him. I've always been a Kel Brook fan, but I knew he wasn't going to beat Golovkin, and I knew that the Errol Spence fight were a 55 45 in Errol Spence's favour because he's southpaw, massive puncher. Bigger KO ratio than Golovkin, Errol Spence. So, Kel Brook been in with him, he'd been in with Golovkin. Now, he did as good as he got with Errol Spence, but I think mentally he wasn't right and he shouldn't have took that fight. But, Eddie Earn saying he's a beast, he's a massive middleweight. He's never fighting at Welter again. Next fight, what does he do? Go and does Welter, but what he does then, he'll say, oh, you get a nutritionist and do it right. Do it wait right. Just get me that money coming in, baby. That's all they're bothered about, innit? Money. That's all these people are bothered about, money. They're not bothered about fighters. Uh, for example, look at Tyon Booth. Now, Tyon Booth, he's... No, I don't agree with what he does when he digs Carl Froch out. Apart from that, I think he were handled wrong. Now, I, I was looking at his record over there in Dennis's office. We went through it. And do you know what? He gave Eubank as good as he got. But he never had a proper camp for that. Now, we were a proper camp, him and Eubank. We thought that were a different fight. But it's a bit late in the day now, so he can feel wronged. And I think... I'm not going to comment on what, what happened with that with, with Scott Westgarth because it's a tragedy and I always think that things like that were, be were best off not saying anything at all and it's just a tragedy for his family but what somebody sees as banter it can be other people, it can be received as in bad taste can't it but I still think that he'll kick his son for the rest of his life as regards not putting his foot down when he took the Eubank fight because if he'd have been ticking over, he'd have been ready, wouldn't he? That's why fighters, message to you out there. If you've got no money and you want that phone to ring, always tick over. Because if the phone rings and you're not ticking over, you're going to put yourself in that position where you could think, if only. Now, tie and move. He's one of them, isn't he? And that's, he's in that predicament, isn't he? Every time he sees Eubank Jr. performing badly, he's going to think, if only I'd been ticking over. If only, if only. You know, it could have been a runner bean. But uh, let's see if we can get a couple of people on the channel. Uh, let's see. Let's see what we can sort here. Let's have a look who we like. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. So I forgot enough time here. Uh, no, I think we'll. I think we'll leave it. I think we'll leave it. But things are looking good. I've got a. Uh, 
I'm, I'm working with Dennis again now. Uh, I'm working with Dennis again. I'm not going to go into why I'm doing it. Uh, I think because I just love boxing, don't I? I'm trying to fit it in with what I'm doing with my own stuff, but I'm working with Dennis again now. So, we've had a art to art, and I've said my bit, he's said his bit. We went out for two heavy sessions, very heavy sessions on the drink. Uh, really heavy sessions. Sessions where... I can't remember anything, them sort of sessions. You know, waking up in that field there, and my skids, my jeans here. Heavy sessions, well not yet, actually further down, but... Heavy sessions, no. And don't take that as drugs, because Dennis doesn't take out. He hates all like that. But, and I said my bit. I said my bit, he said his bit. But when you're a big hearted like me, and you do things at drop of an art, you're always going to have an edge over somebody that wants pain, aren't you? You know what I mean? So what? I ain't got a matchmaker's licence and they want that the board don't like me. Doesn't mean no, does it? It's get somebody else to sign off on it, don't you? But but yeah, I'm working with Den again, and you know, there's uh, there's offers out there for fighters. Now we're going to see, aren't we? There's going to be a few offers put to people. Uh, there's been an offer. Of, not back today. Steve Goodwin. Steve, it's Porky. How are you doing, pal? Uh, would you be interested in fighting Tommy Frank, your man, Brad Watson? I think he's got a great story. Brad Watson is Dennis's ex fighter. They've had a fallout. Steve replied, Thanks, mate. Hope you're well. It's not a route we are pursuing at present. We don't want the fight. Tommy Frank, right, fight. Yeah, hope you're well, Steve. So, we can only try, can't we? There's another couple of things we've got lined up for Tommy Frank. He's going places. Uh, there's uh, two new signings coming for Dennis. I'm not going to mention who they are yet. Uh, I've had an hand in both of them. Uh, both of them were my idea, and I pushed it for both. Uh, not out of malice or anything like that. It's business, isn't it? Just business. I like the people who we're dealing with on one of them. I like them a lot. The other guy, I like him as well, he's very quiet, uh, but I don't really know him that well. The others, I know him, I like him, trust them. If you can trust, if you trust somebody, you're halfway there, aren't you? Uh, and, you know, I'd, I'll stay out of it with regards to finances and that, I'll just do as I'm told. So, it's nice to be working with Den again. Obviously, you know, we had ten months off. And he got married, and I read that fallout, didn't we, for five months, and he got married, and Christmas, and all that stuff, and... But, don't mean to say we're not going to fall out again, as you know, we had a scuffle in Bulgaria. It bit me there. I got him in an headlock like that. Like a little rat, man! Spun him round! And he bit me there. He punched me in the chest in the purse, black. So obviously he can fight, can't he? He punched me there, like... <gasps> No, I don't mind having banter with people and then putting shots into it, but when they put a bit of mustard on shots, I went, you are, come here. And obviously, maybe I were a bit out of order, because when somebody's having banter with you, and, and maybe I took it wrong way, I don't know, so maybe I were a bit out of order grabbing Dennis in an headlock, and I was rubbing his head like that, you know, on his, uh, on his hair, uh, but, but he bit me there, bit me there and there, and uh, he had bruises all over here next day. I had two massive ones there, but it were like red. You know, where blood had come up to the surface there. Reaches that way. The bar is that way. But now uh, we had a bit of a scuffle in Bulgaria. Well, a bit more than a scuffle, but you know, next morning it's all forgot about, isn't it? You know what I mean? But I don't know if I told anybody on my channel. Dennis had to go see a chiropractic. When I see him next day, we're like that. You fucking bastard, I had to go see the chiropractic. Mark Ramsden, Rami were howling and Celia. <laughs> hey, we're howling. <laughs> and Frank, Frank Smith, my pal from Berry. Then he's fucking apart like that. Well, Frank goes to bed, doesn't he, at 11 o'clock. I went to bed, didn't I, late, about 3 in the morning. Past that, Frank was filming me. I snore, I snore, don't I, me? He says, that's what I've had to put up weight next day. He showed me. So Frank, if you're watching, I know you are, pal. Hope you're all right. 
sorry not been in touch the last few days, but come and see you in a, in a couple of weeks. We'll go for something to eat, pal. I'm going to see Robin Reed. I'm going to get that legacy thing done with Robin Reed. Get that one with Peter done as well. It's all looking good. It's all positive stuff. And still not had a penny out of boxing. Because it's not about that. All you people out there who are involved in amateur boxing, remember this, you got involved in it because you love the sport. But when money changes hands, people react so differently. And it shouldn't be about that. It shouldn't be about that. But... But anyway, are we up and we're nearly there? 29 minutes. So that's just my opinion. I'm entitled to it. Uh, I enjoyed it in Bulgaria, but yeah, I'm enjoying working with Dennis. We've got a show on July 5th. We're doing, there's another one as well in Banger, is it? Banger, Banger, Bogner, or something like that. Is it Wales or something? There's another one, and I'm not sure if it's May or June, that's going on free sports that we're going to be doing. And there's one on July 5th, because what people don't know, and it's like Terry Chappen Darmo was saying to me overnight, Dennis is the only game in town now, in it for TV? After Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren. Because who else has got TV now? Channel 5 have pulled out, haven't they? They're done. So the phone is ringing off the hook at Den's office and hopefully I'll get all interviews from all these shows and it'll only help me channel away in it. If I can help give him lists to fighters and that, I'm going to do that and I don't mind doing a bit of running about and that. Steffi Bull can take piss all he wants, Dennis is tea boy. Yeah, I'll make him a cup of tea from in his office but he'll also buy me a cup of it Costa. Things like that don't bother me. Bill Gates makes cups of tea for uh, Warren, uh, him who owns, what, that old codger. You know, he was, he was a billionaire as well, Warren Buffett. It's a cup of tea, isn't it? Is there's a tea bag in, we're a bit runny. I, I made cups of tea the other day for fighters and managers who'll come up. So what? I don't go up there that much. Make, Michelle will make me a cup of tea, I'll make her one. People say I'm tea boy. It's like people say Frank Smith's tea boy at Eddie's, at Eddie's and they've given him this title, Chief Executive Officer. Good luck to young Frank Smith, I say, because... Trust me, mate, I know how busy I am with what I do, and we're just doing little bits and bobs with Dennis, and he's got a small stable. I know how busy Steffi Bull is with his stuff. It's a full-time job. Glyn Rhodes has got relationship problems every other day because of his gym that he runs. Boxing is a 24-7 job. In an ideal world, if I had a lot of money, I'd get Terry Chappendama up here to move up north, Ozzy Smith from Chorley, Smiddo, and, and Rico, my pals in the box who, who, are, who are involved in social media and podcasts and things like that. And Terry's got a trainer's license. I think Ozzy has something to do with Michael Jennings' gym. They're all in and around the fringes, just like I am. I'd have them boys on board because I listen to their opinions. The boxing asylum lads. I've offered them to come down to Dennis's show many a time. Andy Patterson, Tommy the Ghoul of Ireland, Brian King. All them boys, Steve Wellings, and they welcome any time ringside tickets because we listen to their pod and I respect them lads' opinions. Rob Kelly, uh, them, them guys, uh, they, them boys know boxing. All them lads on that asylum, Dave the Eight, a low back. I mean, I've never met him, but there's a lot of them I haven't met, but you know, the boxing people, I like uh, Martin Theobald. I like Martin Theobald as well. So. I'd blow him away in that M sport. I used to go to school with him. He was a spy up brat. I'd blow it away in mine. But but yeah, so this is how I look at it, right? Boxing's an hard enough sport, so you've got to surround yourself with good people. Now, I've made a mistake in the past. I used to surround, to surround myself with drug dealers and fag dealers and and doormen and GBH merchants and car thieves and things like that. Now. I ain't got anything against anything like that, but if you surround yourself with wrong people, you become like them, don't you? And I want to surround myself with good people now, don't I? I'm not saying them people weren't good, but I've done a lot of prison, haven't I? And, uh, you know, a 10 year or a 12 year period is a long time, isn't it? It's a very, very long time. 10 year is a long time in prison over that, men over that period of time. 
October 1991 till May 2004, work that out and work out 122 months in that period. That's a long time, isn't it? So them days are gone for me now. I mean, I mean, uh, I was shining in light. I'm, I'm shining in light, but I was shining in darkness one I before. I was dark like that car, like this car. I'm in here dark. You know what I mean? Can't have a white one, can I? I should go get a white one, but they had to keep clean. But I was shining in darkness before. But now look at me. I'm like a pig in muck. Channels flying. I'm working with Den again, I'm excited about the future, and who knows? I might even get a petrol voucher off him this time. Envy Windows, E-N-V-I. Shout out to my mate who owns Envy Windows. Decent window, but when I were at Window Business, it was Sinseal. Sinseal 2000 frame. They still make that now, in fact. Did you know that? Not a lot of people know that. But yeah, I'm shining in light and I'm really, really happy and I'm happy with channel. I'm even happy about that little video I did with Stiggy, Stiggy Poos. The Stigginator, I'm even happy with that video I did with Stig, although he is cringe and I told him he's cringe to his face. I don't say out behind Stig's back. Sometimes he's a cock, sometimes I'm a cock. But he were good enough to have me down there at his gaff, wasn't he? For, you know, to, well, well, from like midnight till three in the morning, so he did me a favour for them three hours, but could have sat in the car, couldn't I? But, you know, he's, he's learning with boxing as his stick. I think he's a bit blind with Tyson Fury, isn't he? But then again, I will with Carl Froch, but you can't knock Carl Froch's CV, can you? Ten world champions beat plus Andre Dirrell. Whether they class him as a champion or not, I don't know, but at the time he undefeated Olympic medalist and red hot. Ward didn't want to fight him in Super 6, did he? That's rehearsed, isn't it? But no, I swear to God, honestly, uh, I'm in a good place. And all them people that have sent all these emails into me, right? I am really, really, really proud of them people for doing that. I'm dead proud because it means a lot to me that. I know I know there's about 48% don't subscribe because I don't know why that is, I don't know. We get we get software, don't we, emails off uh, YouTube and they tell you who subscribes and who don't. So if 48% don't subscribe, that probably takes us up to about 2,800 people that were uh, watching it any other time, so that's good, isn't it? But we're only a little, we're only making a little slight tone of bell. You said about my channel, it's it's like a, it's like a fart in in an hurricane, isn't it? Against people who do numbers and that. Well, what do, what is numbers? What what do numbers do? I mean, I saw an interview the other day that Coogan did with this novice boxer, and it's still on his channel now, and it's only got three thousand a week later. So. He's got 400,000 people who watch him, so why didn't all 4,000 watch this novice interview? Why is that? Why is that? If only a half, a, if 1% of 400,000 is 10%, 1% is 4,000 views, doesn't it? If he's got 400,000 following him. So 1% is 4,000, right? So if Coogan's not even getting 4,000 views on a video in a week, it's not 1% of his viewers, is it? So all his viewers then, really, they're not boxing people, are they? Because I watch every one of his videos, every single one. And I watch every single... It's the first force of income... Uh, force of, for, it's the first bit of news, isn't it? I watch every single one of Behind the Gloves, every single one of Boxing Social, and I watch every single thing on boxing news I like to keep abreast of things I like to know what's happening I've got a text here I've got a text here off Den have you how many shows are on in, in May in local area Russ find out tonight you know, so that'll be two hours, won't it? But that's like a little bit of homework for me. But sometimes I might ask people that I know who, who I feel that I can trust. 
I might ask them, oh, can you get me a list of fighters for so and so? What? And they might they might either do it or they won't do it. Some people, there's a lot of good gunners in there on the internet. Will say, yeah, I'll help you out, Russ. I'll give you a list of who I think is a good fight, and I'll have a look at them, and it might save me a, a half an hour's time because I don't have much time in the day. It might save me half an hour. Now, if it done, it done, does it? But some people. There's talkers and there's cheese and onion walkers, isn't there? I'm outside house, sat in car. Where, where do you think I are? I'm not, I'm not gone yet. Well, if you look, my shoes are in kitchen. Polish is in boot, I had it in office. <laughs> Heaven forbid I should go out. But... But, er... Uh, but yeah, so it's one of them things in it, but I'm in a good place at the moment. And like I said, all them people that send them emails, brilliant. And if anybody's got any ideas out there for Tommy Frank should fight next at Super Flyweight, send me because, Jesus, me and Rico were looking on Boxwick last night. There's three European guys, three Europeans. So you don't want anybody from Mexico or America because you've got all plane tickets to buy, aren't you? When they're coming over 500, you've got five plane tickets. So Europe's better. You've got three European guys in the top 150 on box wreck and they're all booked out or injured. How's about that? So what does Tommy do? So I thought, well, we can either get Brad Watson on board. Steve Goodwin just knocked us back. He'll be in the same predicament for Brad, you know. Or... We can get somebody to step up from flyweight, step up, then it's an easier fight for Tommy. And if he's fighting somebody that's not as big as him, because there's only a couple of pound difference, isn't the three pound difference? What is it? What is it? 112 to 115, or is it 115 to 118? I forget what super fight is now, but but we'll see, won't we? We'll see. But I just wish Chris Medley were back on team and Liam Cameron. I hope their appeal goes all right, because I liked working with them. I like Liam. I know people are going to say, yeah, Porky, you only like Liam because you sniff coke with him. No, I don't sniff coke with him. And if you look, Liam didn't get done for sniffing coke. It was a substance found in his body that was similar to coke or a subsidiary or substitute or something for coke. I don't think it actually was coke. But, but all them people who are email, emailing me saying, oh, I bet Liam gets good chong. Now he's, now he's, now he's Commonwealth champion. I bet you I bet you you and him sit up talking shit all night, don't you, Porky? No we don't. No we don't. Yeah, I've been out with Liam a few times. But uh as regards sniffing. Unbelievable man. But it is what it is, isn't it? But I hope that uh it continues where we're going now because Soon we're going to be taking channel to the next level. We're looking at doing a porky evening or a porky event. Uh, I don't know when. Uh, we're not going to have it at the corner pocket in Mex for now. I saw the Xboxers.com. They had their party there with John H. Tracy, and and I don't think that is going to reflect good on the channel. Main thing is because yeah, it's near a train station, but. I don't think it's going to reflect good on channel because it's, I think it's cheap, I think it's cheap, yeah two quid a pint but it's like piss and they don't do food there and I don't want to be messing about with food, I want to do something somewhere with something a bit classy, I want to put a jazz singer on and pay him a proper fee, you know get somebody in who's really really good. Uh, we know we know somebody in the music. We know a few people in the music industry, and uh, we've got somebody lined up. And I'm thinking we're going to have it at the library in Attercliffe, Sheffield. It's this trendy place at the moment. It's a tapas bar. We're, we're going to have music on there. I think the date ain't confirmed yet, and we're already into April. But I think we need a good. I think I need a good month with channel. Get a few more people interested, and we need a few more people interested because I don't want to be forking out a lot of money for nobody to come because I'm going to look daft, aren't I? If nobody turns up, but that won't bother me because my friends and family will be there, so and Nicholas' friends and family will be there, so we'll be all right that way. But 
I do want some hardcore boxing fans there, don't I? I just don't want it to be like a family affair. I want people there who I've never met before so I can, you know, have a drink with them and talk boxing with them. And, but it ain't going to be one of them events where we're just there pushing porky merchandise on people because that's not what we're about. And we aren't, we aren't, we're not, I don't even know if we're going to do all like that, I don't know. People keep asking me for tops and stuff like that. Yeah, we've got porky mugs, but they are just what we use in office, they're not to sell. I've given a couple away, I give Jimmy Tibbs one, I give Stig one. I think there's a couple more. I think we bought ten, I think, or something like that. But we're going to sort some out. So down the road, it's all going to be sorted. But this is early doors, isn't it? So they've been, we've only been really doing it, haven't we, since... Is it ten week? We've only been ten week. Ten week. You know, and... I'm embarrassed to say how much is in... In, in porky uh, YouTube advert. You know them YouTube ads? I'm embarrassed to say how much is in account. <laughs> What is it, 10 views for a penny? <laughs> Jesus, people skip it so I don't get paid. <laughs> no, we, well we had to do that for to legitimise the channel, but we're not going to get rich on that. I think I can buy this with... Well, what we've earned this week from ads, I bought this. <laughs> and I had to put two quid to that. But no, it's... Uh, people have got it all wrong if they think that there's loads of money with them ads. Well, let me tell you this, for example, Coogan Cassius is the third biggest one out there. They made £27,000 last year from YouTube, right? So, work that out. 27. Now, that is probably, I don't know, probably half a man's wage for a week, innit? If you had a car pitch, and that were your profit for a week, you'd, you wouldn't have no money to go home to your missus. If you had a car pitch and that were your profit for a week, you'd be going home with nothing. You'd be going home with, I don't know, down you paid your pitch and your valet, you, you'd probably break even. So that's, that wouldn't be any good. So there's no money in the YouTube ads. So all them people saying, I don't want to follow you, Porky, no more because you're just in it for money. You're a hater, you're a hater. Well, I can assure you, we've hardly got any followers, have we? We don't get many views, it takes us a week to get a thousand views on a video. So, it's just the boxing community that watch my channel and a couple hundred hardcores, so. But, don't be thinking that it's all about money, it ain't, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's got to generate something on it because I can't keep throwing money at it because I'm going to run out of money. And, but I'm in a position to do this for a good few years yet. I'm probably going to do this for a couple of years. If I haven't got 100,000 followers in the next five years, I'll be disappointed, but at the moment, at the moment, after two years, we're probably going to have about 2,000 followers. <laughs> but we're just a small minority, but we keep saying it as it is, and it? we're upsetting people, aren't we? But what can you do? It's look, no, not everybody's popular in boxing. For example, let me tell you a little story, right? I once spoke to Eddie Ayn at an after party, this is when we used to speak, and we had a chat about pop being popular and that, and Eddie couldn't take it to heart and that, but only for a, only for a few minutes, but it's it's just one of them things, in there's, boxing is an hard sport, and not everybody can be popular, can they, so, but we're trying my best, and that's about it, really, so, peace out. Keep on trucking, anyway, and keep sporting boxing. I'm going to go out now, I've had, you've got 60 minutes, 73 minutes, so keep, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing, it's a great sport. Put it up now. I'm getting my shoes.
Ja. <lacht> ja. 